Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 15th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering adding some extra bits and pieces to our game as well as randomizing the candle location to add a twist. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. And you'll find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So first and foremost, what I want to do is I want to add something into our game that we can spawn the candle onto, much like we have with our table over here. So I kind of want to have maybe um, a desk somewhere here and some filing cabinets somewhere here. So we've got one of three locations that we can spawn our candle. So what we'll do is we will bring in some more assets. So let's go to our object assets folder and let's drag and drop these office models. And as always, if you go to the pinned comment, you can download these for free. Uh, so if we go into the Office Models folder, we've got a couple of different models that we can just drag and drop into our game, and that's what we'll do. We'll do it real quick. I'm not going to use all of these. You can if you want to, uh, but I'm going to use the desk as one model. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit because it is a bit too big. 75, 75, 75. Let's rotate it. Uh, minus 90 that way, and let's have 90 that way. Uh, it still looks a little bit too big, but I guess we can always uh, work it out a little bit more. Drag it down to the floor. And these models don't come with a box collider, so you know the drill at this point. We can just add one in. Uh, we can go to Add Component, and we can go to Physics, and then let's just add a box collider. Perfect. Might make it a bit thinner, actually. It looks a bit fat. Uh, let's change it to 60. That looks a little bit better. OK, uh, next thing we want to do is let's add in a filing cabinet over here, but I want to lay it down on the floor. Uh, let's rotate and just drag it down. Again, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. If you want to play around with the materials as well, it's your prerogative. Uh, but once again, let's add component. Let's go to physics and let's add a box collider. So now we have a couple of different areas that we can spawn the candle in. Uh, I say a couple of other models if you want to drag and drop. In fact, let's drag and drop that chair, shall we? Just for just for a bit of fun. Let's change it. 75, 75, 75. Box collider so we can't walk through it. And what we'll do is we will take our candle and we're going to basically duplicate it. But all three duplicates are never visible at the same time. So over at the candle. If you remember, we have the candle itself and we have the candle trigger. So both of these are relevant to what we are doing. Let's now encompass these in one single object. So we're not copying multiple objects over and over and over. Let's go to game object. Let's go to create empty. And we'll call this candle interact. And let's drag and drop the candle and candle trigger into candle interact. And if we turn it off up here, you'll see it indeed does disappear. So before we do that, let's hold control on the new candle interact object and let's move the candle to another position in our game. So we want to have it on the table over here. So let's drag and drop and place it on the table. May need to uh, bring it up a little bit. Desk is a touch higher than what the other object is. So we just need to bring it. Let's have it there. There we go. And once again, hold control, press D to duplicate, and let's bring it over and place it on the fallen over filing cabinet. So round about there. So next thing to do is name these. So I'm going to have these as 0, 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 3. OK, so we have three candles in our scene, but we only want one to appear. We want it to be randomized where it is. So firstly, let's turn off all three of those. So select all three in the hierarchy and then untick up here. Next thing we need to do is create the script that allows us to randomize the location. So if we go to scripts, let's create a new script. And we'll call this candle random. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a variable for each of the candles. 
and we'll also have a variable which will determine which candle appears. So we randomize a number. And there are different ways of doing this. We can use, um, best way to do it is just define each variable as its, as its own individual one rather than an array. But if you want to use an array, we'll get to arrays later on this series anyway. So first and foremost, let's get rid of void update because it does not need to exist. And let's get rid of the annotations. Let's now declare our variables. So firstly, let's serialize field. And the first variable is going to be um, candle location. Um, that will be of type integer. So serialize field int candle location. Uh, next, we need to serialize field. And we can say game object, and this will be candle one. And then we can do the same candle two and candle three. Now, obviously, we could go further. If you want many more locations, you absolutely can. And what it comes down to is which uh, candle you need to appear. So you could have seven candles if you want. You would just need to know that at that point, it's probably worth using an array. Uh, like I say, we will get to arrays. So. What do we need to do first? Well, we need to make the candle location number right here a random number. So it, it could be one of the three candles. So we need to say candle location equals random dot range. And in brackets, the lowest and the highest. So the minimum is always going to be one, for example, comma four. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Jimmy, we have three candles. Why do we need to randomize four? It's just a perk or quirk or whatever you want to call it of Unity that it will never generate that maximum value. Just keep that in mind. It's not a big issue. It's not necessarily a bug. It's just you having to key that in mind, basically. Be mindful that if you have three, we can generate one, two, or three. So you would have the maximum possible as four, but it will never generate. What we can do now to make this fully work is to say, well, if we've generated one, then let's display candle one. If we generated two, candle two, and so on. So we need to say, if, and in brackets, candle location equals, and that's a double equals, one, then open curly bracket and do the following. We say, candle one dot set active, true, semicolon, and that's that if statement done. Now, the reason we don't need to worry about any of the others at this point is because they're all turned off. None of them are going to be on when we start the game. So we only ever need to turn one on. And we can literally use the same if statement over and over. So if candle location is equal to two, then obviously we have candle two dot set active as true. And like I say, there are easier ways of doing all this. This is more to kind of help you visually see how all of this would work. Like I say, with arrays and everything, it would be a bit different, but I promise we'll get to it. Uh, so now, instead of retyping, let's just copy what we've already written and just change it from three to three. And the script really is that simple. This script was, will now randomly generate a place where our candle is found. So if we go to uh, Unity again, once it's compiled. Give it just a moment. We all know what Unity's like, taking a little, little bit of time, but that's okay. Uh, so all we need to do is basically add these variables into place as soon as we get the script in the scene. So on our main game object that we have for uh, level control, which is right there, let's drag and drop the candle randomizer here. And then we just need to add in candle one, candle two, and candle three. Now, obviously, we have no candles active right now. So I'm going to save my scene just in case. And if we press play, one of these candles should appear. Who knows which one? But we'll soon find out. And then what we'll do is we'll do it once again to make sure that it is indeed randomizing. So we fade in. No candle there. The candle is over here. There it is. And we can indeed pick it up still. So no matter where you go, whichever candle is randomized at this point, you will be able to pick it up. 
So let's make sure it spawns in a different location rather than the disk. It should do. Well, I say it should do, but obviously there is the chance it could spawn in the same place. It could generate two again. Uh, but yeah, there we go. It's now spawned here. So if you've played The Demons Inside, which I mentioned in the very first tutorial of this game, you'll know that the candle does get randomized its location in the first section of that game. And this is exactly how it's done. So the candle could be there, it could be there, and it could be there. We've not generated it back on the table yet, so I might keep going until we get it on the table. Hopefully it'll appear this time. But you can see the idea of it generating random numbers. There we go. And there is our candle on the table. Perfect. So that's how we can randomize any object in any location. Uh, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to expand this a little bit more and we're going to have a door down here somewhere. And this door is going to be the start of a proper good jump scare. Uh, again, if you've played the demons inside, you might know which jump scare this uh, refers to. So yeah, next tutorial is going to be all about creating a door that we can uh, open and then we'll be creating a door uh, with a jump scare. So remember to subscribe, click the notification bell, to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series, and I will see you next time.